Iran backed Houthis targets with drones Hezja and kill one child. The United Nations says that the war in Yemen has killed and injured thousands of children nationwide. The government calls on international community to put more pressure on Houthis. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English News from me, Shazad Delbey. In a new Houthi crime against children, a child was killed and two others were injured in a drone strike that targeted a school in Hajja. According to a local source, the child Yusuf Abdu, 11 years, was killed, while Ahmed Ali, 8 years old, and Sultan Hamid, 10, were injured. The Houthi militia's drones targeted students while they were on their way to the school in a village under the government control. The UN said that the number of child victims in Yemen has risen to 11,000. The United Nations Children Fund stated in a report that about 4,000 children were killed since 2015. This report has more details. According to the UN, more than 11,000 children have been killed or wounded in Yemen's civil war since it began over eight years ago. That is an average of four children per day since the war began in 2015. However, the exact toll of the conflict is likely to be significantly higher. Thousands of children have lost their lives, hundreds of thousands more remain at risk of death from preventable disease or starvation, said UNICEF's executive director. According to UNICEF, over 2.2 million Yemeni children are critically malnourished, with one quarter of them under the age of five and the majority at high risk of cholera, measles and other vaccine-preventable illnesses. Yemen's civil war erupted in 2014, with Iran-backed Houthi rebels seizing the capital Sana'a. Hundreds of thousands of people have died since, either directly as a result of warfare or indirectly as a result of poor drinking water, disease epidemics, famine and other consequences. According to the UN, the war has resulted in one of the world's greatest humanitarian crises. 3,774 children have died between March 2015 and September 2022. A six-month truce established by the UN lasted until October 2nd, but warring parties were unable to agree on an extension. According to UNICEF, at least 62 children have been murdered or injured since then. The urgent renewal of the truce would be a positive first step that would allow critical humanitarian access and only a sustained peace will allow families to rebuild their shattered lives and begin to plan for the future. The UN agency also stated that 3,904 children have been recruited into the fighting ranks over the years, with more than 90 girls being assigned duties such as working at checkpoints. UNICEF has requested $484.4 million to address the humanitarian crisis. If Yemen's children are to have a good future, all those in positions of power must provide their protection and support.
The UN envoy to Yemen, Hans Grumberg, said that he is working to renew the truce that ended on October. Grumberg said, stressed that he is in constant connection with all parties to find solutions. He stressed that any settlement must be comprehensive and also based on various inputs of many segments of the Yemeni society. A number of women activists from different parties organized a conference to fight violence against women. It's aimed at fighting violence against women through a number of research papers, while mainly focused on fighting political violence against women and protecting them as active partners in all aspects of life. A number of women politicians from different Yemeni parties in Taiz have launched a unified meeting to combat violence against women. The meeting includes submitting a number of action papers in different sites such as economy and religion. I participate in this meeting representing GPC political arm. In this meeting, we are combating the political violence against women. Women are subjected to political violence from all Yemeni parties without exception. There will be no peace or security unless women participate in the political decisions. We call to activate women's participation in the political arena. The Yemeni government has called on the international community to put more pressure on the terrorist Houthi militia to make them abide by peace. This report has more details. International pressure is boiling again at the terrorist Houthi militia for the refusal to end the crisis in Yemen and to reach peace. Earlier this week, U.S. envoy to Yemen Tim Linderking accused the Houthis of obstructing truce efforts. French ambassador to Yemen had recently said parties no longer believe the Houthis claim that they are victims in the conflict. In November, British ambassador to Yemen said his country views Houthis' latest attacks on vital infrastructure in the war-torn country as terrorist acts. The legitimate Yemeni government has long called on the international community to designate the Houthis as terrorists. The government proposes that the international community must do so by stopping the flow of funds and arms to the militia so that they can no longer fuel their war machine. They must also push for the continued implementation of the Security Council Resolution 2216 and prevent the Houthis from gaining any legitimacy. Observers believe that there is only one side that is obstructing the political process in Yemen and the international community lacks the means to change the situation. This creates an imbalance in pressure and in turn leads to more Houthi escalation and more concessions by the government. Designation of the Houthi militia as a terrorist group will lead to economic and political sanctions and will allow Yemen to restore some of its vitality and ease the Houthi oppression against the people. The designation must be coupled with real support to the Yemeni government that should not be limited to relief aid but must include also building its capacity to recover. Naif al hajraf called on the UN mission in Hudayda to make progress in implementing the Hudayda Agreement. This came in al hajrafs meeting with the head of Ummah, Michael Berry, in the Saudi capital, Riyadh. The two sides discussed the latest developments in the political efforts to bring peace to Yemen through a peaceful solution and the mission's efforts to implement the Hudayda Agreement. A number of detainees in the central prison in Sana'a have gone on a hunger strike against Houthis. They appeal to human rights and humanitarian organizations to end the violence and to release them at once, especially when their arrest is unlawful and is considered violation of the constitution. In Aden, a conference for justice and law was organized to protect the human rights in Yemen. This event comes in line with the International Human Rights Day that is observed on December 10. This report has more details. The war sparked by the terrorist Houthi militia has violated our rights and freedom in Yemen and dare to prohibit things until it rose to the level of systematic war crimes. This called for a serious stand by the higher state institutions, headed by their presidency, ministries and the relevant judicial and justice agencies, with the aim of finding mechanisms to limit healthy violations. 
اليوم نذكر العالم كله بتلك الانتهاكات التي Today, we remind the entire world with all the violations that the Hith militia are practicing against civilians. These violations include torture, forced disappearance, restricting civilians' movements, and the legal arrests and many others. Such events are very important and a good chance to remind the international community to carry out its duties in order to promote and respect human rights. The government's realization of this healthy persistence and the militia's abuse of violating the basic rights of Yemenis resulted in networking with the relevant UN organizations and commissions in this regard to protect their remaining rights. Experts in the field of human rights believe that human rights violations resulting from any war cannot stop unless these wars and conflicts end. We need to protect human rights during this hard time that the country is going through. We need to work all together in order to end this war. Ending the war is the only way to stop the violations that are constantly committed against Yemeni civilians. We call on the authorities, the organizations and the international community to support all peace efforts and to help us end this war. Justice, the rule of law and the protection of human rights are what Yemenis are looking for amid the healthy militia's continued violations against defenseless civilians, the reality and the future of the country. The Yemeni Network for Rights and Freedoms revealed that it documented more than 100,000 violations of the Houthi militia over the past eight years. The Yemeni Network for Rights and Freedoms said that the Houthi violations left about 48,000 dead. Coming next in the news. Yemeni artifacts seized in smuggling attempt to the United States of America. Welcome back. The Yemeni cabinet discussed developments in the situation in the country. The Council of Ministers approved the formation of a Committee of Academic Abilities, known for their honesty to review the policies of scholarship and the files of beneficiaries without exception and the application of legal standards to all. The Yemeni Journalist Syndicate held a meeting to discuss the importance of promoting professional and economic rights and the independence of media outlets. The meeting came out with a number of recommendations, the most important of which is the development of a code of ethics on professional and ethical standards for journalistic work. The war in Yemen has cast a shadow on the educational system, whether on high school or at university. This report has more details. A practical symposium titled Students' Reluctance to Enroll in Colleges of Education in the Republic of Yemen, Reasons and Remedies, was held in ties by the Department of Academic Development and Quality Assurance in the College of Education at Ties University in collaboration with the local government. The scientific conference was convened to explore the causes behind the students' reluctance to enter educational colleges and possible treatments for this phenomenon. Taiz University holds a small workshop to review research papers that detail the reasons behind the decline of student numbers in the faculties of education. 
According to estimates, there were no more than 320 students spread out over the six departments in the College of Education at Taiz University this academic year. Meanwhile, six additional departments were closed owing to an abnormally significant fall, implying that the number of students hesitant to enroll in educational institutes is increasing year after year, a phenomenon that requires diagnosis and treatment. This symposium is part of the Faculty of Education's effort to play an active role in enhancing the educational system. However, the main obstacle facing the faculty is the students' reluctance to enroll in this faculty. This phenomena is not only faced in the Faculty of Education in Thais, but it affects universities nationwide. In the symposium, three working papers were reviewed by specialized researchers that dealt with reality, ambition, and the reasons for the students' reluctance to join the College of Education. Yemeni artifacts have been under constant siege since the outbreak of the war eight years ago. Recently, the authorities have removed 75 artifacts while they were going to America. This report has more details. The U.S. authorities said 75 stolen Yemeni artifacts were seized during an attempt to smuggle them to the U.S. This coincides with the Yemeni government's call for Arab backup to preserve the Yemeni heritage and restore stolen artifacts. The ambassador of Yemen to the United States condemned the efforts of the U.S. Department of State and relevant authorities to activate the decision to protect the Yemeni heritage and ban the trafficking and smuggling of Yemeni antiquities. During his meeting with the Assistant Secretary of State, he said that the Yemeni government appreciates the U.S. security body's efforts that led to seizing the antiquities. This contributes to raising awareness, protecting the Yemeni heritage and combating the smuggling and trafficking of Yemeni antiquities in the future. Meanwhile, the Yemeni Information Minister called on his Arab counterparts, the Arab League Educational, Cultural and Scientific Organization and similar organizations to reinforce coordination in the protection of cultural heritage in Yemen. The call was made at the 23rd Conference of Arab Culture Ministries, held in Riyadh, represented by the Saudi Ministry of Culture in cooperation with the Arab League Educational, Cultural and Scientific Organization. In the past eight years, Yemen has undergone the biggest and most hideous deception in its modern and recent history by a terrorist group as an obeying tool for the Iranian regime. Monuments have been damaged, looted, and their artifacts have been smuggled out of the country. This is particularly the case for sites within conflict areas. And the wider the current conflict spreads, the more danger is posed to the old towns and other historic locations, where combat groups have rooted themselves with catastrophic consequences. UNESCO was affirmative damage to sites of outstanding cultural significance in Yemen. Therefore, they called on all parties in the conflict to protect Yemen's cultural heritage and refrain from targeting by shelling or by airstrikes or using for military purposes cultural heritage sites and buildings. Ongoing airstrikes and military conflicts with the Houthi rebels bring the threat of further destruction of important historical buildings and cultural monuments in Yemen. Each time the country confronts clashes, numerous historic monuments suffer due to continuous devastation and ongoing smuggling. The Merchants Syndicate protested against the policies imposed by the terrorist Houthi militia against merchants in their areas of its control. This comes after the Houthi militia decided to reduce prices in their areas of control in exchange for raising customs by the government in Aden. The traders vowed a comprehensive strike if the Houthi militia did not respond to their demands. Here's a reminder of the main headlines. Iran-backed Houthis target with drones Hajja and kill one child. The UN says that the war in Yemen has killed and injured thousands of children nationwide. The government calls on the international community to put more pressure on Houthis. This is the end of the news. Thank you for watching.